What's up, people? Today we're diving into a topic you've been asking me to explore more in detail, pole vectors. We look at how to set them up so you can drive them manually or have them follow the IK chain automatically. And I also share some best practices to automatically and mathematically place them. And of course, plenty of tips along the way. So let's jump in. All right, first of all, what is a pole vector, right? A pole vector in animation is a control that tells an IK chain which way the elbow or knee should point, for instance. In short, it's a control used to define the direction of the joint band in an IK system. In Unreal, we already have plenty of nodes available to handle pole vectors. Inside a graph, you usually see pole vectors paired with IK solvers in the forward solve. That means that for pretty much any IK function you pick, the pole vector input will already be there and ready to define. You'll find nodes like IK2Bone and IK3Bone, which are essentially variations built on top of the basic IK node, the core rig units written in C++ for us. So let's start with the basic IK. I first create a simple visual example before moving on to a character. In the construction event, let's procedurally spawn some controls. Then, inside the forward sole, I bring in the basic IK node and plug in the controls, just like we would with bones in a chain. The F vector should always be the end item of the chain, while the pole vector, as we explained earlier, is the mid item that defines the bend direction. For that, I spawn another control, place it manually where I want, usually around the mid length of the chain, as I said, and then connect it into the pole vector input. To make it more visual, you can add some debug nodes. For example, use drawline strip to display the triangle shape of the IK chain and a simple drawline to connect the mid join to the pole vector, just like we're used to seeing in other DCCs. By the way, this exact debug setup is already built in the IK2 bone and IK3 bone functions. You can even double click on those nodes to dive inside and check out how the debug is right up. Now in this example, I place the pole vector manually. But did you know you can automate that? and place the pole vector exactly where it needs to be, especially if your chain is not word aligned, for instance. Unreal already gives us a node called Compute Pole Vector. Inside, you'll find a pretty intimidating chain of mathematical nodes full of subtraction, dot projects, and vector calculations. The goal here is to figure out the pole vector position automatically based on the chain's direction and angles. It might look scary at first, but here's the good news. You don't have to redo the math yourself. It's all done for you. So no need to dig back into your old algebra lessons. Everything's already set up for us. Here's a quick setup you can try. Drop a compute pole vector node into the construction events and specify the three items of the chain. Usually bones, but for the simple example, I just use controls. From the transform output, create a spawn control node. That control will be our pole vector. As you can see, it's placed perfectly at the midpoint of the chain. Now, if I tweak the Y value on our mid item, you'll notice how the procedural pole vector reacts. No matter if it's a small offset, positive or negative values, or even if we move other parts of the chain, the pole vector always stays in the correct spot. Super handy, right? Now, what if we want the pole vector to actually move along with the mid chain item? In this first example, we are moving the pole vector manually, which works fine in most cases. But sometimes, you'll want a smarter setup where it automatically follows the mid-chain. And here's a clean way to do it. Let's switch to a more concrete example with this asset here. I've set it up just like before with an IK function and a compute ball vector in the construction events to handle automatic placement. Now here's the trick. Create a node or spawn one dynamically in the construction events. I'm doing it here just like with our previous control. Then map the item output to the spawn control parent input to place the pole vector inside the node. From here, in the forward solve, add a position constraint. Make the node the child and the mid chain item the parent. As you can see, the pole vector now follows the chain automatically, while still keeping its independent functionality. Using a null is really important here. If you constrain the pole vector directly, you lose the ability to move it manually. 
With this setup, you get the best of both worlds. It follows the chain smoothly, but you can still adjust it individually whenever you want. Finally, you can keep things really simple by using the space switching feature in animation mode. Just specify the new space for your pole vector, like the end chain you want it to follow, and then select it whenever needed. This can also be animated directly in Sequencer, giving you a lot of flexibility. I've even made a full video on space switching with our buddy Buzz, so make sure to check that out. To recap, Henry gives you several nodes to set up your pole vector exactly how you want. You can use any IK function or the compute pole vector node in the construction event for automatic placement. Adding debug visuals is helpful and animating the pole vector manually works in many cases. But the most robust setup we covered is parent the pole vector to a null, use the null in a position constraint to the mid chain item. This way, your pole vector will automatically follow the mid joints while still allowing manual adjustments when needed. And that's a wrap. Now you know all the secrets about pole vector in Control Wave. Thanks for watching. Don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe as always, and see you next week for a new one. Ciao!